Now, earlier today, I saw something quite remarkable. A woman with severe disabilities who stood up and she walked around. She did so thanks to an exoskeleton, a suit into which she straps herself, allowing her first to stand and then to move around and then to handle and lift objects. Now, the woman is Sophie Morgan, and I've been speaking to her in the week that her suit, called the Rex Exoskeleton, will be one of the technologies showcased at the Disability and Tech Trade Fair Nadex, uh, which takes place this week in the UK. I visited Sophie at her home in London, where I also met the suit's developer, Richard Little. First, Sophie told me about her disabilities and her exoskeleton, Rex. At the moment, he's standing. So what you can see is the exoskeleton itself is is standing. It's it's kind of um, in a, in the position that I would get it would transfer up into when I stand. But I would sit it down to transfer into it from my position. He stands about uh, chest height, and uh, on the right hand side of the exoskeleton is a controller. It's like a joystick controller, and. Uh, he is like a, a robot where the, the body parts would be kind of have been hollowed out because that's clearly where the human body, where Sophie's body is going to go. And we're now going to see your manoeuvre that I'm sure is very well practised and choreographed as you transfer from the chair into he, into the exoskeleton. <sighs> So, so now he's seated. He is seated. Yeah. So that, that noise is Rex getting into a seated position. So there are the foot pads that stand on the floor and the exoskeleton has essentially knee joints and so those have manoeuvred themselves into the seated position, which now means, I guess, that you can, can get chair, yourself into it. Right up to it. Right, so you're using your arms to manoeuvre from the chair into yes. Rex's own arms. Exactly. And... Your feet now go onto the like the little platforms, essentially, that hold your feet in place. It's almost like strapping yourself into, I don't know, one of those amusement roller coaster rides. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of straps. And, I mean, at the moment, the way it, it is is you have a strap around your shin. Then you have a strap around my, just sort of middle of my thighs at the front. Then I have a harness which goes underneath me to hold me up, essentially, and then a strap which sits around my stomach. So from there down, I have no movement and no sensation. So that's why you need to be strapped in especially yes. well, you exactly. know, from the sternum down. <laughs> exactly. But I guess the real, the magic, as it were, is about to begin. You're yeah. going to manoeuvre into a standing position then. Exactly. And what happens now is there's this... Goes, the controller goes around and I get to choose the option of sit and then there's stand. There's a variety of options, actually. I can tell you which are amazing for me. It's really exciting. The first time I saw this, I couldn't believe it. It's like a dream, being able to choose these options. But we have walk, shuffle, stairs, and you can do um, stairs of different heights as well. Stand, sit, and then back to shuffle. So you've got the... You can choose. So right now, I'm going to go to stand. <laughs> <laughs> it was as easy as that. I mean, yeah. literally, at a, the press of that. a button, and now you stand here, and you're standing to your full height. Yes. So you're about my height. I'm Taller. average male height. In fact, you are taller than me. <laughs> you're now it's gazing down at me from on high, from this standing yeah. position. Yeah. Really, really upright as well. Yeah. You press the button, and you're standing, and that's it. And then, and you walk. <laughs> That's just stunning, just to see you walking like that and to see that you and the exoskeleton are so, so finely balanced. Clearly you trust the skeleton enough to take these rather bold steps from the safety of being seated to walking around your apartment. Well, I think one of the things that's amazing about Rex is that I don't feel like I'm going to fall over. At the moment, I'm standing without any support, as in the sense I don't need to use crutches, I don't need to hold on to anything the robot is fully supporting me and I can just stand here and gesture fully with my hands. I can hug people, I can throw my hands in the air and I can wave my weight around and I'm secure, I'm completely stable. And then walking, obviously, 
you know, it's probably not the same as a walking pace, but it's absolutely adequate. It's a fantastic pace to walk at. Wouldn't want to go any faster. Well, Richard Little is the developer of the Rex Exoskeleton. He's also the co-founder of the company Rex Bionics, which manufactures this. Can you talk us through the technology that allows this exoskeleton to work? There's um, 10 motors in, inside the machine. Uh, there's 29 processors, 29 m- microcomputers inside that machine as well. And they take care of all the, the balancing, the charging, the discharging, the batteries and all the, the messages. There's a message every three thousandths of a second um, going on in there. So there's an, an awful lot happening. And when you say messages, then, you just mean communication from the sensors to the motors just to make sure everything stays in balance, the I suppose. The sensors, the motors, the user, the battery working, the temperatures inside the machine, where the legs are at any time, and modifying all that stuff too as it walks along. How does the machine manage to stay in balance, given that walking, it, it is a, it's a very complex activity, isn't it? Mm. Well, walking generally is a very unstable activity. We, typical walk is you're, you're falling almost all the time in a controlled way as you, as you walk. Um, so we have a slightly different walk with the machine where it's, it's more of a hip swing. You lean to one side, you concentrate all your weight down through that foot, and then the machine moves the other foot forward. So all the time through the walking Rex, it's balanced and stable. On top of that, the machine also alters its feet to the terrain. So if it's on a slope, it'll adjust the feet and then adjust the walk to suit that terrain as well. What kind of uh, uses does it have? We can see Sophie here who's using it. Military uses possibly as well? Uh, it's not really built for, for military. It was designed specifically for a wheelchair user. We have an engineer who wears them to build Rexes. So the guy who's building the Rexes is actually wearing a Rex and he's an engineer. He needs to be able to stand at his bench and look down on the dials and on the lathe and things. You can't do it from a seated position in a chair. We have a doctor who wants to stand and operate. So as many folk as there is, there's, there's different options. And Sophie, silly question really, but what difference has it made to your life? Being able to function and live in my house in a standing position, that is just amazing. It's a huge benefit, but I'm sleeping better, I'm feeling better. It's just in general, my body just feels extraordinarily different, less spasm. I still dream that I'm walking, so it makes me just feel better. I don't have to feel disabled anymore because essentially I can still do all the things that I dream of doing and that I used to do and that I have a right to do actually and that my body wants to do. You know, I can now stand, I can now walk, I can now, I mean, all, all of the things that come along with that is, is it's huge and I can, I can do all those things again. Sophie Morgan and you also heard there from Richard Little. Uh, so Bill, I mean it does seem by anybody's standards pretty remarkable now that, that we have technology that's rugged and reliable and strong enough to allow that to people to restore function in the way that clearly has been the case with Sophie. Well, sort of the, the Rex website has this, this, this slogan, it isn't transportation, it's transformation. And, and that sounds like a cliche, but actually it's clear from hearing Sophie there that it is making a significant and massive difference to her life. And, and so is the sort of technology that can make a massive difference to, to people who are unable to walk, who do need this sort of, sort of assistance. And for me, it's a great technical story. You know, the technology has been underdeveloped for, for 10 years. They started Rex in 2003. It's taken a long time to get to this, this place, and it's now helping lots of people. And it's also worth noting that they actually have two models. So there's the Rex Personal, which is what Sophie's got, her own machine. There's also what they call the Rehab Model, which is used within hospital settings or clinics, where people who might be wheelchair-bound most of the time can get some experience of walking. Because, you know, as, as animals, we are made to be standing and spending a lot of time in a wheelchair is really debilitating for people. My, my mother was wheelchair bound for the last few years of her life, and it was really hard for her, yet not be able to be upright, but also it's unhealthy. And so the rehabilitative aspects of this, I think, are really quite significant. Even if you can't afford you know, the, the, the machine for yourself, you can still get access to one. Yeah, sure. And, and that point about the health benefits of being able to stand upright and off tape, actually, it's one thing that Sophie said to us. It's really helped her in that way. Um, on Facebook, uh, our listener in Brazil, Johnny Ho, says, I'm not particularly excited about the forthcoming World Cup, but uh, it is worth mentioning the planned kickoff, which still plans to feature a paralysed person using a brain-controlled exo- exoskeleton. Regardless of criticisms or supporters, it will be uh, something very interesting to look forward to. It is important, and I think we're going to see more and more of these exo- exoskeletons developed over coming years. They're going to become more common you know, in public life. You know, People will expect to see them, and they will be transformative. OK, Bill, thank you. This is Click from the BBC in London. I'm Gareth Mitchell, and of course you're listening to Bill Thompson here as well.